Welcome to another video. Today we're looking at the Pioneer CTF 2121 which was made from 1975 to 1977 and you look at this thing it just looks weird. It's kind of a weird looking tape deck because it's got this tape just kind of sitting it there at an angle. So on the left we have a top loading piano key style tape deck and it looks like the keys of a piano and the tape sits in there hard. <laughs> Yeah. Like playing the piano, yeah. It sits in there horizontally, so that style was popular in maybe the late 60s to the mid 70s. On the right, we have a more modern style, which is kind of what I was familiar with. And the tape goes kind of face down, and you have like uh, the buttons you press below that. What's this weird tape deck in the middle? It looks kind of like somebody just punched their fist yeah. in the middle of it or something. You can't really see stuff. You have a door that you flip up, and then you kind of shove the tape in there. Uh, like it, it sort of goes back in an so angle. shove it in like an 8-track. You do sort of have to kind of push it back up. It's almost like you're pushing it down into a funnel, I think. And then and then you can just play. And and you have a door. It's a door close button, not a door open button. Kind of you weird. have to stick your hand in there to get the door open. Yeah, you have to push the door open. So, so this tape deck was available, uh, I think, first started manufacturing in 1975. It was most heavily advertised in 1976. This ad shows it with the optional uh, wood case, which mine doesn't have. It was uh, touted as kind of a value deck. There it is. Uh, it was the only deck with this particular style in the 1976 catalog. Other, all the other ones had There's this. There's one called a bubble. Oh, yeah. the pink kid in the black plastic bubble. Yeah, those those other ones, front loaders, had kind of a bubble feel. And then they also, in the same year, sold those top loaders. But the only oh, those one... piano keys. Yeah, th that was a combo system they offered. The, the, the combo system in this deck are the only two that uh, actually had this, this slanted style in 76. What is it about this style? I mean, what's the advantage? I, you know, it's kind of weird. I mean, you've got an independent door. You press the button to close the door. You can eject it with or without the door. The door is not really necessary. It's just it's just very odd. You see the counters kind of set back, and uh, when the tapes play in, it just sort of looks looks odd. Um, so they first introduced this style in the 1974 catalog with the 7171. They said it's our ingenious jam-proof tape compartment slanted at a 30 degree angle. I'm not sure how ingenious it was, or they're they're just trying to try something new. So kind of. Looking through the ads of the time, you know, other manufacturers had it. Kenwood had a similar design, although they didn't have the cool round buttons of the Pioneer. And then Iowa and Doe Quarter had uh, some similar models. But it is a Dolby. Yeah, yeah. They all had Dolby noise reduction at this point. But uh, they sort of transitioned from top, top loaders to front loaders. And during that period, they came up with a number of different designs. Like here's, uh, you know, Toshiba just trying a bunch of different things. Sansui by 77 was pretty much phasing out their top loaders and just going to the front loaders. And today, in 2018, you can go on Amazon and you can see the uh, front loader one. You can buy this Tascam or TAC model for like uh, 500 bucks. Here's with the top cover off. You can see the motor. This this one was made in 1975. And it looked like based on Do the... Do not e touch one on. Yeah. Looked like based on the eBay description, it was just belts. So to get the bottom cover also had this kind of bent thing. I'm not sure if that was from shipping or it was already there. I didn't see anything on the box. I just bent that back into place. But anyway, you remove the bottom cover and you can get to the belts. You have to take off this like little uh, uh, section here with that solenoid. There's uh, just four screws, and one of the screws is kind of stuck behind. Uh, yeah, there's a little hole they, they have. You can you can kind of get to it. There's this triangular thing you can get to, and you take that off, and you can get to the main belt uh, underneath that, and that's what makes... Uh, uh, once you replace that, play works. Um, and uh, there's a picture of it actually running, I guess, after I replaced the belt. While we're in here, let's look at some... There's some fuses. All those fuses were fine. There's some interesting things in here, like that solenoid is the auto shutoff mechanism. So if you you start rewinding, it, it'll automatically stop when the reel stops turning. Another weird thing that's just like that record selector, that's like 10 inches long. It's a massive piece of metal. I mean, I've never seen a record switch that big. That thing is huge. Yeah. And basically what happens, you hit the record button. I bet Bigfoot can use that as a weapon. Yeah, well, Bigfoot is watching this. I don't think he has YouTube. But anyway, so you press that and of course that does the record switch. So to reach the belts on the top, you remove one little, loosen this bracket, and you remove the top plate. You, um, on the top, you got two belts. One is the belt for the just, tape movement sensor. The other is the counter. So the, here we have fast forward, which that little center thing moves the reel. Rewind was sticky. Sticky. Yeah. Sticky, I'm jelly. 
unfortunately I, I had already put the bottom stuff back together so I just had to kind of work that thing loose and put some oil in there uh, a little drop of oil around that gold thing. Or 40 thing. HD 8 wait no. WD-40 no yeah. no we used uh, some I forgot what something I got on Amazon for tape decks anyway but let's try it with some power on here and see what that looks like all right so there's fast forward it works fine that piece moves over uh, play works and then rewind was sticking for me. You can see now, of course, without that, without a tape in there, it's going to stop. But I can kind of trick it to keep going, keep trying by making that right uh, wheel move. And then, uh, so anyway, eventually I got all the belts replaced, got the thing working, worked loose where it would actually turn and put it all back together. The door. Yeah, this the plastic door has these two springs that kind of hold it in place. And I guess either during shipping or over the life of this deck, this little plastic piece had broken off. So we taped it. Yeah, well, we tried to super glue it. Uh, and uh, super glue... Fail. Yeah, super glue didn't work. Gorilla uh, glue. Gorilla glue, super glue. So I ended up just putting a piece of heat... Oh. Yeah, thank you for the gorilla simulation. I ended up just putting a piece of heat shrink tubing over there to kind of give it a little bit of but support. Then you put tape on it. I thought. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. I did put tape on it. And uh, you can't really see this that well, and you don't need it. The door works fine uh, without having that other spring. So as you can see here, it still works. There. Vending it is. machine. Yeah, it does look like a vending machine. Um, but yeah, the, the door operates okay. You really don't even need the door. It's just one of the really peculiar things about this tape deck that makes it unique. It does sort of provide a very interesting uh, mirror effect when you play this with the door open. And if you eject a tape and the door is closed, you just flip the door up and it falls out. It, it's just a very odd mechanism. You can open the door and eject it or eject it with the that's door closed. Old, uh, that's a, the UFC tape. Weird you, you, UFC, you mean UHF? That was a Weird Al album. But it's also it, a movie. Yes, you're right. You're right. It was. Can uh, we watch it sometime? Sure. It has a kind of a cool look. I can imagine it at and night. It's funny. Yeah, I can imagine at night with the lights off. It looked really cool with that mirror tape deck spinning. It's in the also dark. nine dollars in the USA. Yeah. Well, as far as the style goes, this style holds up better than the sort of space age bubble style they adopted later. Uh, but probably not as well as the kind of cool open face style that they adopted from 1979 to 1980. But I guess uh, that's the end. Yep. That's about it. Um, See you next time for another video.